Nowadays, our lifestyles make us sit much more than we move around. Sitting all day might actually be killing you. Numerous studies over the years have linked too much sitting to a greater risk of obesity, higher blood pressure, stroke, or ultimately, premature death. Office jobs have become a common form of employment. Although office jobs can be comfortable, they also have hidden dangers in the form of office chairs. Scientists have concluded that prolonged sitting is dangerous and increases the risk of dying dramatically, similar to obesity or smoking. Yeah, stick with me for that one. My name is Gimmins and today we'll see how sitting damages our bodies. Our story today begins in the 19th century. The Industrial Revolution intensified and many companies grew dramatically in size. Suddenly banks, textile manufacturers and insurance companies made unprecedented revenues. Some smart businessmen realized that the companies became too complex and they started to employ large quantities of employees to keep track of paperwork. Rooms, entire floors and buildings were dedicated to put these new classes of workers into confined spaces, which were called offices. People were drawn to them as they were seen as comfortable and stable jobs. Yeah, <laughs> stable. And while work-related accidents generally dropped, office workers faced new dangers. But it would take years until they were recognized. Over the years, bigger and bigger office buildings were constructed. The Empire State Building, the Rockefeller Center or Shanghai Tower are only some examples. And skyscrapers helped to meet the ever-growing demand of office space. Since the 1950s, the number of office jobs has increased by 83%. At the same time, the number of physically active jobs has plummeted from 50% in 1960 to less than 20% today. And this was only one part of the issue. As people became less active in their working hours, their leisure activities also changed. Unlike a couple of decades ago when people most enjoyed spending time outdoors, now they tend to prefer indoor activities such as watching movies, TV shows or engaging with social media. The average adult spends over 2.5 hours a day on social media, which in itself is an issue as we've covered it in the past. And as a result, more and more people became physically inactive. Suddenly there were people setting up records where they spent over 145 hours playing video games or over 94 hours binge watching TV. The combination of sedentary jobs and leisure activities that involve little physical movement has resulted in people being more physically inactive than ever before. And this is already bad enough, but fortunately nothing else happened in the past years which might further exacerbate the lack of movement. Oh, the COVID-19 pandemic made home office jobs more popular. And this in itself is not bad. However, since the start of the pandemic, more and more people have reported that they sit for prolonged hours. In one survey, it was found that 40% of all participants sit more than 8 hours a day. And this is why I decided to make this video now. Prolonged sitting is bad for our bodies. And as we will see, prolonged sitting is bad on our bodies in many different forms. A small disclaimer, the studies presented in this video have specifically been designed to investigate the effects of prolonged sitting on our bodies. Some of the negative effects of prolonged sitting are similar to those of being physically inactive in general. There is a lot happening when we sit down. When we sit, we transfer the weight of the upper body to the thighs. Pressure is put on the spine and the tissue surrounding the thighs. Normally sitting doesn't do much to our bodies. If we sit for a couple of hours a day though, our blood flow is reduced and our digestion slows down. At some point we'll find a burning sensation in our hips and this is our body directly responding to the pressure we put on our thighs. If the burning sensation persists then cells in the tissue might start to die. In the long run, prolonged sitting can degenerate the discs in our spine and lead to nerve damages. Especially poor posture can lead to lasting damages on our body. But besides damaging our anatomy, sitting does also something else. In one study, participants tried not to move for several days. The goal was to find out how the complete lack of movement affects our bodies. It was found that the lack of movement changed the cholesterol and sugar levels in the blood of the participants and increased their insulin response by 67%. This is one of the reasons why physical inactivity is associated with type 2 diabetes. And this is not all. Blood can pull in the legs, which can decrease the amount of blood and oxygen that reaches the brain. As a result, our brain doesn't get as much oxygen and its activity becomes compromised. And scientists have already found impacts of this on the brain. Prolonged sitting and physical inactivity have both been associated with the thinning of the medial temporal lobe, which is a brain region associated with memory. And although this is still debated, some scientists argue that this is the reason why prolonged sitting and physical inactivity have been associated with dementia or depression. But again, a clear link here is still missing. 
The reduction in blood flow also impacts our hearts. In order to compensate for the reduced blood flow, our heart has to work harder and pump more blood, which can lead to an increase in blood pressure. Over time, this increased workload on the heart can lead to damages in the heart muscle and increase the risk of heart attack by 147% in the long run. Yeah, that's a lot. And it doesn't even take decades for such a serious condition to arise. Even young adults who are otherwise healthy can have some serious complications. Prolonged sitting can lead to what some call gamer's thrombosis. Gamer's thrombosis occurs in people who play video games for long hours. Take the case of KL. KL is a 31-year-old man who worked as an exterior painter and enjoyed gaming. He played on his couch for most of his free time. On what seemed like a usual day, he started one of his gaming sessions. Suddenly his palms became sweaty, his knees became weak and his arms heavy. When his mom brought him spaghetti, he experienced pain in one of his legs. Initially, KL decided to ignore the pain and continue playing video games. After three days though, his leg was more swollen than ever, and so he decided to go to the hospital. Upon examination, doctors soon realized that a vein in his leg was abnormal in size. The ultrasound then detected a blood clot in his leg. In KL's case, the lack of movement resulted in a reduction of blood flow, especially in the veins. As a result, blood platelets got into close proximity and started to stick together. Blood platelets are normally important to stop bleeding after an injury. They do this by releasing molecules into the environment, which causes so-called glutting factors to activate. The glutting factors together with blood platelets then stop the bleeding. The excessive gaming sessions caused platelets in KL's leg to send the wrong signal and form the blood clot in his vein. KL was lucky though, in serious cases blood clots can move through the body and block the blood flow somewhere else. The blood clot might end up in the brain causing a stroke or travel to the lungs and result in a pulmonary embolism. And this can become life threatening. Fortunately, KL's blood clot was discovered early and he could be treated accordingly. He was discharged from the hospital and learned a valuable lesson. Switch to more active gaming. Before we discuss what we can do to avoid all these health complications, one last thing. This is a territory where we actually do not know what's happening. So please keep that in mind. Prolonged sitting is associated with a higher risk to develop cancer. A large study followed over 240,000 adults who didn't suffer from cancer, heart or lung disease at the beginning. Over the next eight and a half years, it was found that those who reported to watch over seven hours of television a day had the highest risk to suffer from cancer. Another study comprised over 490,000 men and women aged between 50 and 71 and tracked their behavior. It turns out that men who watch TV for the longest hours had an increased risk to suffer from colon cancer and women had a higher risk to develop endometrial cancer. Again, it is not entirely clear how prolonged sitting contributes towards cancer. But right now it is proposed to not sitting, but the resulting physical inactivity is the culprit. Physical inactivity can alter the levels of sex hormones or increase inflammation in the body, both of which can be risk factors for some cancer forms. But again, we do not fully understand how this works. Nonetheless, we've seen that prolonged sitting can damage our bodies in various ways. So what can we do about that? We can avoid sitting in our leisure time, but many of us will still sit a lot in their jobs. So we need a solution for that. So here's what you can do to fight the negative effects of prolonged sitting. Number one, exercise. Exercise and moving more in general helps to counteract the risks of prolonged sitting. Regular aerobic exercise can help to lower blood pressure, the risk of getting diabetes or heart disease. Even small amounts of exercising, such as brisk walking for 15 minutes, can improve blood flow, which can reduce some of the side effects of prolonged sitting. To be honest, when I made the script, I was expecting this to be the ultimate solution. You just exercise and then you have no negative effects of sitting anymore. But it turns out to be more complicated. Moderate exercises only help to some degree. Even people who are otherwise athletic show a higher risk to suffer from heart disease or diabetes if they overall sit for 10 hours a day. So while exercise might help to curb some of the negative effects of prolonged sitting, it is not the ultimate solution. Instead, we need to keep our blood flowing throughout the day. And there are already some options to increase movement during work hours. Standing desks are promoted as healthy alternatives to curb the downsides of prolonged sitting. Standing helps to reduce the risk of the back pain we might experience when we sit. And with that, welcome to today's sponsor. Just kidding, that would be kind of bad. However, the remaining benefits are more speculative, such as reducing the risk of obesity, diabetes, cancer or heart disease. This is also why some people now put treadmills under the desks. Treadmill desks have to curb the risk to develop back pain, but they also seem to improve our blood flow and blood pressure. And scientists could already show that this helps brain activity. 
In a study, people were asked to pretend that they had to tell the boss about the information in a text message or some email within 40 minutes. They tried to memorize the text messages while emails were being sent to them and they had to decide which emails to open and to summarize it for the boss. At the end of the 40 minutes, they were asked about the messages and the emails they read. Treadmill desk users were almost 35% more likely to answer questions correctly. While some of the long-term effects of treadmill desk still have to be verified, it seems to help at least to some degree. But there is a last secret weapon we have. Taking breaks. It is suggested that standing up every 30 minutes when we sit to move a bit around is the best solution. So this means that when we are at work, we can stand up, walk a bit, maybe talk to a colleague. And this is a good way to keep our blood flow steady while avoiding all the side effects of sitting. So yeah, take a break. Office jobs have revolutionized the world economy. But although office space is in general safe, prolonged sitting can damage our bodies. Sitting for long periods is associated with back pain, disturbances in our metabolism, heart disease, stroke, dementia, and various forms of cancer. Fortunately though, there are a few things we can do. New workplace models encourage movement while we work. And while this might help, the solution can be even simpler. Take a break from time to time and go out for a walk. With that, a question to you. What do you do to stay active? I hope that you enjoyed this video and so feel free to like it and comment and do all the other great YouTube stuff. And with that, I'll see ya. If you're interested in how to get smarter or how we might slow down aging, you might like these videos.